at this place in history. We're in Richford with Steve Perkins, the executive director of the Vermont Historical Society. Steve, one of the true joys of producing uh, this franchise with you is that every time we go out to uh, produce some new installments of it, we have a chance of learning something we didn't count on learning, something we'd never heard of before, and that's exactly what this week's installment is. Oh, I know, Mike. We came to Richford to shoot one story, and we heard about this woman named Queen Lil. Yeah. Lily and Flory, minor before that, ran a line house in East Richford, half in Quebec, half in Vermont, set a brass tacks down the middle of the floor in the bar room, so whichever side the police coming in, they could shuffle everybody to the other side, so they were in the other country. It was close to the railroad tracks, very close to Canadian Pacific tracks. There may have been as many or perhaps even more railroad stops at Queen Lil's establishment than there may have been at the actual train station. No, it's very possible. From what I've always been told by some of the older people in town, it was a very busy place, multiple other business ventures going on in the building upstairs. She kept meticulous records of these various lines of business that she had. I have to believe that's why she got away with what she got away with for so long. Now she was born in, in Richford, yes. but she, she yes. left. With her first husband running a uh, medicine show, yeah. then ran a brothel in Boston. I don't know if it was a problem with law enforcement in Boston that drove her drove her back north. But at the time she moved back here and she built her, her house here, um, palace, shall we say, mm -hmm. it was illegal to build buildings across the well, international uh, the, board. the original building, it wasn't yeah. illegal. The, the original hotel burned down and when she went to rebuild it, the, both the Canadian government and the American government were trying to stop her because they weren't allowing that type of building anymore. She went to court and, and, she, won. and she won. In the studio portrait uh, that you showed us, she's a parrot on her shoulder. No idea what the parrot's name was. I never heard. <laughs> I never heard. But it, it was hers, though. My dad used to hang out at a local garage. Homer Green was the, the gentleman's name that owned the garage. She came in to buy a car, got the paperwork all done, and Homer asked her, said, now, how do you plan on financing this? And I, I know my dad said she had the most disgusted look on her face. It's like, Homer, you know me better than that. You know how I'm going to pay for this. And just started counting out $100 bills. <laughs> and so if you want to come to Richford and learn more about Queen Lil and all the other great stories they have here, how can you do that? During the summer, the museum's open on Saturdays. If you were to contact us, we could let you in. Is there a website? It's just Richard Vermont Historical Society. It's not a website, it's a Facebook page. Okay. And if anybody posts questions, somebody tries to answer them. Queen Lil paints the town of Richford red in the early 1900s at this place in history. This is Fox 44 Morning.